They're at Baltimore again tonight, 7.05 right here at 97. Won the ticket, Francisco Liriano on the bump for the Tigers. Quarterback Shea Patterson declared eligible to play for the University of Michigan this year after the NCAA granted the transfer request to waive the usually required redshirt season. Lions, former Lions general manager Matt Miller needs a heart transplant. He is 60 years old. NBA playoffs, Raptors oust the Wizards 102-92. Pacers stay alive. They blow out Cleveland 121-87. Family Cup playoffs game one, Jets four, Nashville one. At the Ticket Update desk, I'm Jeff Lesson. For more, 97.1 theticket.com. Good morning. Welcome to the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding. I'm your host, Harvey Freed. Alongside me, we got a great panel this morning. Always to my right, Mr. Harry Glanz. What's up, everybody? Good morning. That's great wake-up music today. I like that. You like that? I'm strong. Let's get up. We're definitely waking people up here. 903, if you're just joining us, uh, we've brought a whole panel in. We've got Terry Lee Bloom from Century 21 Affiliated out in Novi. Hey, Terry, welcome to our show. Good morning. I'm it's, excited to be here. That's so great to have you. Of course, Terry, you got lots of years experience, 25 years uh, in the real estate world. So She's a rookie. Looking to hear what your <laughs> tricks of the trade are again. I know you've got a lot of experience. So, yeah, it's going to be great to have you. And we'll talk all about some great issues about buying and selling homes. Be sure to call us all day long here on the show at 248 248- Five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Always a capital mortgage. One eight hundred low rate. The best mortgage banker. Again, you got to get a strong approval letter, and we're going to talk all about that. Also, we brought in from the office. We got Bobby Efros over there. Bobby, how you Morning, doing? Marv. Representing University of Michigan. Congratulations Woo! on uh, Patterson being able to play QB for you. Yeah, we'll see. Right, we'll talk about that later. And Bruce <laughs> Rosenblatt. Hey, Bruce, good morning from our office. Of course, Bruce does the, uh, he's the vice president of business recruiting and coaching and training at our office. Hey, Bruce, you got something to add today. It's going to be very helpful. So is it true, Bruce, you've known Terry since she was just a small child? Uh, we were both small children. No, no, you're, no, you're still a small child, but yes. that's okay. Yeah. She's a grown up now. She's an adult human being. We just had an adult conversation. It was great. She's very excited to be here. She's energetic. She's enthusiastic. She's passionate. And you've known this person. You've been hiding her from us. You know, she's uh, she's just a classy, classy lady, and, you know, we finally, for all the years that we've known each other, we finally had the opportunity to start doing some business together, and we're just thrilled to have Terry as a partner now. Awesome. So, Terry, just to, to go over your experience, love, you've been doing this for over 25 years, and you're where right now? I'm with Century 21 Affiliated in Novi on Grand River Road between uh, Meadowbrook and Novi. Hi, everybody out there. It's a great area to be out yes, and, and about. And uh, what's the market like in Novi right now? Hot. Not enough listings. So you hear that every week every. on this show for the last, I want to say, two, two and a half years. Yeah, two okay. years, for sure. And then since January 2012, Harvey, we've come on this, uh, the show and said that it is a seller's market, for lack of a better word, because there's a lack of quality inventory. And now there turns out just to be a lack of pure inventory out there on the market. We're seeing multiple offers, Terry Lee. We're seeing things going over for list price. We're seeing people come up with some creative ways in their purchase agreements to make offers. What are you seeing out there? Well, how I coach my buyers, um, just be very clear about the appraisal. It's important as a real estate agent that I understand how, uh, how appraisers work, how they think, how underwriters think and be able to come up with really good comparables so that I know that the house is going to appraise. Yeah. That, that's such a good topic, Harvey, and we talk about that all the time. That, she, didn't even, she didn't even let me lead into my favorite question we bring on new realtors <laughs> on oh, the show. Because she, she, was, she was coached really well. It's very, very important to understand that when you're in a seller's market, that that house might not appraise out. Why? Not because the house isn't worth it, it's just because there were no comparable sales. Leading up to that, so again, we talk about things. Whether you're selling a house for a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand, and somebody bids and they're bidding higher, Terry, that doesn't mean the appraisal is going to come in, does it? Oh gosh, no. I coach people to consider the possibility of, you know, if the if the appraisal comes in low, can you generate some cash to contribute toward a shortfall? Right. And some people are good with that. And some people aren't. But that's okay because you're telling them this. And that's why they for, need to know. you know, everybody says, you know, Harry, sometimes you like to talk about appraisals a lot. You like to talk about interest rates a lot. You like to talk about costs a lot. Well, it's like blocking and tackling when you're coaching. You know, when you, when you coach and you go through practice, 
there are certain things, whatever sport you do, if, you're, if it's football, you block and tackle every day, okay, and you work on your special teams. If it's baseball, what do you do in baseball? You throw, you hit, you run, you hit your cutoff man, you work on your special plays. In basketball, you've got to make your free throws and make your layups. In the mortgage world and in the real estate world, you've got to talk about property values. You've got to talk about payments. You've got to talk about do you qualify. These are just the basic things that you have to go over with your clients on a daily basis. You've got to talk about credit. You've got to talk about income. Terry, you're not going to show somebody houses if they don't qualify, are you? Oh, heavens no. No. Terry, in this tough market, you know, ready to purchase uh, in, in today's market is different than the other purchases. You mentioned actually the, the shortcomings of the appraisal could potentially come into play. So, you know, you've bid up the house, you finally get your offer accepted, and maybe you're about $15,000 higher than or $10,000 higher than that appraisal. It might take some extra money. Actually, they did, all, did some uh, research and they said that only 11% said they would actually spend more money than they originally attended, uh, intended to do so. So it, it takes a real great team of professionals because we've seen clients where they were 20% buyers putting 20% down, but now some of that money has to go to pay because loans or mortgages are based on the appraised value. So it, it takes a professional team. This isn't something where you push a button. This is a plan, an orchestrated plan to yes. proceed and get your house accepted. And you know, I, I wish people would actually spend more money or more time on this ahead of time, and including maybe up to six months. Now, it's not for everybody, but definitely some families out there have some hurdles in regards to funds to close, yes. saving money, and then, yes. of course, getting their credit scores up. 248-539-9797. We're going to talk all morning long about preparing yourself as a buyer to be a really successful buyer and understand that the market has changed over the last couple of years. If you're working with very few dollars and you're asking for seller's concessions, Terry, I know from the experience out there, the clients are having trouble between $75,000 and a $200,000 price range. They're having trouble getting any seller's concessions anymore because they're bidding against everyone else who's a cash buyer. Oh, and that's... Yes, you are so true. That is so true. I had a buyer, I had an offer accepted recently. I think there were, she went up against uh, 16 offers. Right. She was cash. She was lower. She got accepted. We closed on Wednesday. So, yeah. Well, that, that's what's going on. What's going on is, Harry, sellers don't need to give concessions because of so many buyers out there. Why are you going to give something up when you have an offer coming in right behind that second, third, fourth, fifth offer? With that lack of inventory, Harry, one of the other things they're finding, too, is, you know, the needs list and the wants list with buyers. And I know you do work with buyers daily. Of course, it's easy to be a listing agent. Not always, but it's generally a little bit easier to be a listing agent. Um, once you get your sign in, then you're just, you're just catering, obviously, to the actual seller. As a buyer's agent, you're going into different homes, mm -hmm. different areas. Do you find that the needs and wants list have to maybe change once you get out there for the first time? Oh, absolutely. It's a real reality check for many buyers to see you know, what their money's actually going to buy. Mm -hmm. And the prices have really appreciated in the last several years. Have you even seen some folks recently say, hey, you know what, I need to expand my search area. I know I was talking about this location, but maybe I do need to look at some different areas that are a little bit less competitive even. Or maybe I need to hold off for six months mm -hmm. to, to save more money. Okay, so that I does... See, I see that also. There's nothing wrong with that. No. I, we talked about it last week on the show and two weeks ago. There's nothing wrong with it. it the primary... Uh, concern with people are having and and is trying to find a home all right so if you can sell your home you have to sell a house before you get into the new one and you have an opportunity to live month to month in an apartment or live with a relative to save more money i don't see anything wrong with doing that why should you be pressured into buying a house terry lee bloom just because you sell your your existing house oh that's a good thought there you go. All righty. Hey, we're up against our first break here. It's 9-11. Good morning out there. If you just listen, it's the Hardcore Mortgage Show brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding. Keep it here. 248-539-9797. We'll be back with all your calls. Hi, Harry Glanz and Danberg for Capital Mortgage Funding. We do loans everywhere. In Southfield, in Birmingham, in Royal Oak, in Grosseal, in Detroit, in Canton, in Northville. No matter where you live, we want to do your mortgage too. That's Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. Welcome back to the show, 917. 
we cannot say it's one of those great days, Dave McLean, to go out there and look at a house, but you definitely get your, get your <laughs> approval letter first. Definitely be able to check for a leaky roof today. Oh, absolutely. Or a leaking basement. Always yeah. positive. Stay the rain out there. But if you are out there today, you're serious. Absolutely. If somebody lets oh, yeah. you in their house to show the house, they're serious about selling it. If you're out there, you're serious about buying it. Correct. Yeah. Take your shoes off. And, Dave, and Dave's serious about working. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> let's face it. Take your shoes off at the door for sure. Uh, definitely get that approval letter first. Uh, sit down with a real mortgage professional, uh, Capital Mortgage Funding, one 800 low rate you're going to find a full staff all weekend long and that's the thing we'll give you that opportunity it's all about knowledge education and setting yourself up to be a successful homeowner and uh that's the key about it let's move off to mike tomchek who called in mike thanks for taking the time this morning um we're going to uh yeah thank you got you on the board too hey mike good morning welcome to the show mike you there hello mike oh you can plug him in here we'll try uh, in regard to oh. Oh, there you are a conversation you're having about shortage of inventory? Yes. Yeah, let's go. All right, beautiful. Great topic for right now. I wish Alex was there right now. He loves to say that there's not a shortage of inventory, that there's <laughs> a shortage of, of good sense. inventory. Yeah. I'm going to have to go ahead and say that's not accurate right now. There is a pure shortage of inventory right now. I completely Okay, agree. the last, I would say, probably seven or eight appraisals I've done, we're looking at maybe one or two for sale and 24, 25 sold in what I would define as the market area for the particular subject. Right. What that's leading to, and this is the main part of the topic is, and and you guys can address this once I'm off the phone with the real estate agents there, is tons of offers over list price Mm -hmm. and consequently also over market value. Right. Okay. Getting tons of them here. um, I just simply wanted to point out on the appraisal side of it, you guys can buy a house for whatever you want out there, but do not think that the appraisal value is necessarily going to come in. And Instant game. Win up to $50,000. There's fun in every one. Plus, you can register to win tickets to see the Tigers, courtesy of Chevrolet, the official sponsor of the Detroit Tigers. Call 866-66-TIGER or visit Tigers.com for your tickets to any Tigers home game.
Welcome back to show 917. If you're just joining us, hit the mic. I guess it's spring outside. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty decent day out there. We're looking for some great weather uh, tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday. So, again, get your approval letter. Call your real estate agent, your realtor professional, and definitely get out there. I'd like there to play and, some golf today, Harvey, yeah, but can, the guys I'm playing with, they don't want to play because it's too cold out, Harry. Well, I don't want to play in the cold. It's no fun. Is, is that what Mike Stone said to you? We're going to take oh, the wild guess. I don't want to throw Wild guess. I love him so much. I love him. It hurts. We it hurts me. <laughs> it hurts me to love him. We'll get him to play with you. I think it's a nice fall day. Hey, that's a drop, Harvey. You don't want to say that again. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> 248 We talk mortgages and real estate. We brought in Terry Bloom from the Century 21 Terry office. Terry Bloom, affiliate. it says that on her license yeah, plate. Call Lee. You Terry Lee. Don't forget. I like it. Terry Lee. Are you a country and western star? No. No? Okay, that I'm was easy. I'm a rock easy. star. There you are, Rex. Wow. She likes Zeppelin. Nice we yes. got that. Right. She, likes, she, she comes from the area. She's like a, a, a mid-70s child. Which means that's when she grew up, and uh, we were all sharing the same Pink Floyd, ACDC, Led Zeppelin records. You mean she, yeah, we, you mean she we hung out together old. when we were little, so that should tell you a lot about me. Yeah, well, you're still hey, little. Right. All right, we're going to move off to <laughs> Kevin. Good morning, Kevin. You got a question about uh, credit scores and such. Uh, let's see if my guy there is going to click it on. There we go. Hey, Kev, good morning. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? What's up, What's happening? Yes, I was trying to find out what is the best way to raise your credit score, because I was listening to your radio on station a while back, and you was saying something. You shouldn't go to one of those online online credit or improve your credit uh, score. Yeah, the reason we say that is because they're going to want you to pay money to do something yeah. that you can do on your own. Yeah, cause, because because I, I I've done that, and I didn't really see too much improvement, but they was they was just charging me way too much. But when right. I heard you say that, I I counsel I hey. counsel that. Yeah. Okay, so the best way to raise your credit score, how we have to address this, because there are other yeah. people out there that are listening. They think that, you know, they have bad credit. And what happens is people that have bad credit, they just didn't pay their bills on time. Yeah. So they think that they can go ahead and call or click on or something, pay so many money, and that disappears. It doesn't work that way. The no. best way to raise your credit score is, first of all, you have to stop charging on your credit cards. And then you have to, you have to make the payments, and you have to establish an on-time payment history. The more okay. months that you make those payments on time, the higher your credit score will get. And it's not an overnight process. It's going to take yeah. time. It's going to take six, seven, eight, ten months. Yeah. Um, what's your credit score right now? I would say it's, it's low 600. Okay, so you're not that far away. Yeah. Um, okay. You're not that far away. And what I'd like to do is, you know, we'd like to call you, obviously, off the air, get the whole scope of what you're going through. And then uh-huh. we can run your credit through, and, and Harvey has this unbelievable software at the office, and he could run it through, and he can tell you exactly what you need to do. But don't pay people to do this. It's, it's, really, yeah. uh, it's really on you to go ahead and incrementally, month by month, continue to make your payments on time. That's the key right there. Make your payments yeah. on time. Now, now, if you do go ahead and pay off one of those um, uh, debts that went to collection, do you also need to let them know so re- to remove you from that, what they're going to do is yeah. What they're going to do is they're going to put on your credit report. It's going to be paid off. It doesn't yeah. come off. What it'll say it'll it'll say paid collection account. Okay. And that accounts for something. Your score will go up. The, the, when you pay it off, the month after, thirty, sixty, ninety days away. The longer you go that it's been paid off, uh-huh. and you don't run into any other trouble, the higher yeah. your score will get incrementally month by month. Okay. So. I mean, you said once you pay it off, it, 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 I mean, it's, 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 it will still show? That yes, it's, it, it's still okay. going to show, but it's going to show paid, and that's good. That That's okay. a good thing. It's not going to be a ding anymore. It's going to show that you had it because you did. Let's okay. just face it, you had it, but now it's paid off, which is good. Okay. So I would you got to keep doing that, and you got to have a plan to do it, And uh, but it takes time to straighten out credit. Okay. But don't pay anybody. Don't pay no, anyone to handle not, your own stuff. Hey, Kev, I'm going to follow up. We can up. do it for free. Kev, I'll follow okay. up with you after the show. One of the things I'm going to do is we'll run your credit report. That way you'll have a real mortgage credit report in your hands, and we can okay. take a look at your accounts. Sounds like you are uh, you might be ready to buy right now. We actually offer mortgages, and thank you for the call, Kevin. We actually offer mortgages for people with lower credit scores, and we offer FHA loans as low as 600 credit scores. Now, the FHA model... Uh, actually even shows that they'll accept a 580 credit score, but I've never seen those get approved. 
Um, on occasion, if you've got large reserves, you could. But again, well, 600 and above, you can probably get an approval and move forward with the purchase. So there's a lot to learn about credit, funds to close, and again, what mortgage fits your situation. Are you going to jump in on that here? Yeah, I was going to jump in on that. There are people out there right now are thinking, well, here we go again. You're going to get mortgages for people with low credit scores, okay? And and I'd like to address that. That's that's not really what's happening. What's happening is, is that um, we're taking a look at people's credit and we're evaluating not just the credit score. We're evaluating the history. Are they willing to make payments on time? Do they have a history of making on-time payments? Do they have income? How long they've been on the job? And did they just run into something that was tough in their lifetime that was temporary? Okay. So there are all these things that you take in consideration. So it's just not a blanket statement. We do low credit scores. No, absolutely not. We evaluate each case individually, and it has to be approved. So it's it's not that situation at all that happened pre-2008. All right. We've got a question coming in here, actually, from our Facebook Live. And, again, you can check it out on Facebook Live all the time. Just uh Punch in the Hardcore Mortgage Show, and you'll see us pop up there. Um, this is a t- question to you, Terry. It actually says about multiple offers on this. Are they presented uh, to the seller all at the same time? Can the seller review all of these offers? Explain multiple offers on how you present yourself on that. So how I do it yes, and how I do things, not how other agents do things, oh, I have learned. Um, when I'm in a situation like that, I use uh, Google Doc, mm. and I pull out uh, just the important information, the price, the terms, occupancy, closing date, and so forth, and I share that with my client. It's not always the highest offer, the most money that's going to win. It's also the terms. Do you need occupancy? What's that going to cost you as a seller? How much are they putting down? What kind of mortgage are they getting? Is it FHA? Is it conventional? There are many things to, to look at, and I believe that a seller has the right to look at every single offer that comes in. And I can tell you for sure that that does not always happen. Yeah, and I think what the uh, what the question is is that do you you know do you take the first one? Do you look at it as they come in in order? I think you lay them all out there, and I think what you do is you evaluate them on their own merit and and as exactly. as the needs of the seller go. So if somebody wants to stay in their house for thirty days, and there's a thirty day, that's fine. If they want to stay in the house sixty days, that's fine too. If they if somebody offers free occupancy for thirty or sixty days, I mean you're looking at everything other than Everybody always assumes right away it's the price. It's not. it's not the price because if you're selling a house in this day and age, Terry, where are you going to go? Unless you have a house to move into, where are you going to go? So the longer you can stay in that house and it's wrapped up into that offer, yeah. if you have multiple offers, it, it's going to go to the needs of that seller. So it would help from a real estate agent if you knew what the seller was, well, the seller wanted other than price too, right? Well, you have to know everything. Yeah, the, this is an all-encompassing business. You've like got to have the right questions. You know, you need to know everything about that person and their situation, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Right. How else am I going to help you if right. I don't know your truth? Yeah, you really need to know exactly, even on the sellers, yeah. on what their motivation is. Um, yeah. Different strategies in negotiation, communication, the competition's fierce out there. There's always a short window, too, so you've got to be really prepared ahead of time, as we talked earlier in the show about having all your ducks in a row, and that's the key. The problem, of course, any of the sellers are facing nowadays is sort of this, where do I go next? Now, they're starting to put a tagline, and it's called this reverse contingency. Uh, it's nothing new. Uh, what, what they're basically doing now with sellers is, we all know that the homes are going to sell quickly. Come on, Terry. Um, um, That's it. The home sells itself. Uh, the real estate Absolutely. agents do a great job. I'm not taking anything away from the agents there, but the, t- the home sells itself. It's priced accordingly. It's in the location. It's been updated. Families want these homes. Right. Multiple offers. We come back. We're going to talk about what's the seller going to do when they've got all these offers and they haven't found another house. Some of the language that can go on the purchase agreement and a little bit more. Keep it here on 97.1 The Ticket, 248-539-9797. We'll be right back. Hi, Harry Glantz and Dan Burke for Capital Mortgage Funding. We do loans everywhere. In Southfield, in Birmingham, in Royal Oak, in Grosseal, in Detroit, in Canton, in Northville. No matter where you live, we want to do your mortgage too. That's Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. Welcome back to the show, 933. If you're just joining us, gorgeous day out there, and you want to definitely get that approval letter if you're thinking about owning a house, call Capital Mortgage, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. Also here live in the studio at 248-539-9797. 
we got lots to share with you here. And going into our second hour, of course, we brought Mike Harv, Lucas. How about in. those Tigers? I'm, I'm t- what I'm, do you think? I'm all jacked up about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to a good weekend. They're here, young. Yeah. They're fun. They're running. They're stealing bases. Check they're back with home you. Runs. Check back with you in July here and see they're how we're doing. Cutoff men, but it's okay. <laughs> they're all good. It's all good. It's what you do when hey. you play baseball. You throw the ball around the yard. You run. You hit gaps. You have to shake off that loss. You make plays. Last you get excited. Game. Yeah. You're on. sliding head first. We're doing things. We're rolling. I like it. What's wrong with that? Sounds great. No, I love it, too. Uh, definitely uh, Come on. some good vibes here in Detroit. And if you guys want to talk about some debt consolidation, one of the things we haven't dove into yet, and I'll go to that before we get into back to purchases, of course, is consolidating your debt and using that equity in your house. Of course, refinancing has been the way to go. If you haven't taken a look at refinancing your mortgage, there's a lot of reasons why you would refinance. If you haven't taken a look at maybe reducing the term, that would be number one. After that, using the equity in your house to consolidate your debt and, of course, pay off some bad things out there, some of your toxic debt. Of course, Harry just mentioned it was uh, tax season, and if you haven't paid Uncle Sam, that's another reason. Take a look at all the different options you have to get yourself really set up for your financial security moving forward. There's so many times that the mortgage can help you, and before you get into trouble, don't call us when it's too late. Don't call us after you start making late payments and stuff like that. It's, it's, you know, refinancing, we like to help people and we set people for success and it has to be because it's going to save you money or make your cash flow on a monthly basis better or pay off toxic debt. We're not refinancing just to refinance the loan. We're not, no, not throwing you into a one-year arm, a three-year arm when you're going to be in your house long-term. That's just not what our style is. We don't do that. And, and for that matter... There are a lot of great reasons to refinance now. Equities at an all-time high if you do have that toxic debt. But out to dinner with a bunch of people last night, mm-hmm. here's the bottom line with refinancing. If you're going to pay off toxic debt, you have to throw out those credit cards. You have to close the account, tear up the credit cards, and never go back there again. Because all you're doing is using your house as a cash register. If you go ahead and you pay it off and you keep charging and charging and charging, that's not what the intent, at least that's not what we do it for. I can't speak for other lenders. Ultimately, it's up to the consumer, but we want to set you up for success for the long term. Now they come together to compete in the greatest tournament on U.S. soil. Don't miss Manchester United versus Liverpool at Michigan Stadium, Saturday, July 28th. Get your tickets at internationalchampionscup.com. On sale now. Champions meet here. Your unused prescription drugs could end up misused or stolen. Keep them safe. Clean them out. Take them back at DEA's National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, Saturday, April 28th. Find a collection site at DEATakeback.com. Sports news all day, every day. This is 97.1 The Ticket. Brought to you by Parkway Chrysler Jeep Ram. NFL draft continues today at 12 noon. Lions enter the final day, having yet to address their defensive front. They only had two picks scheduled left in the fifth and seventh rounds. They traded away their fourth rounder to England to move up in the second round, and they took at number 43, carry on Johnson, a running back from Auburn. They also take in the third round safety, Tracy Walker of Louisiana Lafayette. Tigers fall to the Orioles 6 to nothing. That snaps the Birds' five-game losing streak. Tigers are now dropped three in a row. They're at Baltimore again tonight, 7.05, right here on 97. Won the ticket, Francisco Liriano, pitching for Detroit. NCAA declares quarterback Shea Patterson eligible to play for the University of Michigan this year. Lions general manager Matt Millen, according to a report, needs a heart transplant. He is 60 years old. Of course, he's the Lions' former general manager. Raptors oust the Wizards 102-92. They're done, and the Pacers stay alive. They force a Game 7 at Cleveland, beating the Cavs 121-87. Family Cup playoffs Game 1, Jets 4, Nashville 1. At the Ticket Update desk, I'm Jeff Lesson. For more, 971theticket.com. Download the all-new Radio.com app and listen to 971 The Ticket anytime, anywhere. 971 The Ticket.
righty. Welcome back to the show. Now we talk always about home purchases and it's home buying season. That makes it a lot of fun. We want to hear from you. 248 539 9797. But also time to refinance. Boy, if you haven't taken a look at what's going on with your mortgage, again, most families have had this great opportunity, Terry. And as you know, so many of the people that bought from 2000, pretty much 2009 till recently, they have built an equity. Uh, yeah. What you bought for 150000 a few years ago is probably worth 200000 now. 250000 The numbers oh are... It's it, amazing to it, see. It really is that type of market. Now, we saw families get into problems, though, years ago. I mean, this was happening when my sort of people were buying and when I was in 30 and we were getting our families together. And they started taking out too much equity. They started doing these home equity loans and finishing their basement and buying boats. And people got in trouble. Now's the time where you just learn how to do it the right way. You know, and, and you refinance. Hopefully. Yeah, and you refinance. Hopefully we've learned. Yeah, there's a lot to learn in a transaction. But again, so these opportunities are out there. But are you seeing like most of the homes that you're showing? Does it appear that they have been updated or does it look like some of the ones that are still out there just need so much work, which sort of leads us to some other opportunities? What are you finding with the homes? I find most homes are in good shape and have been updated. And I'm in a market of, you know, 100 up to about eight. So I see a lot. I see a lot. Yeah. Most of the homes are in pretty good shape. Really? Yeah, okay. Seems like families have been putting some money back into it. And that's the key is to do your kitchens and bath. And we used to get those calls off about renovations, where to put the money. You do seem to get more for your bang your buck in return if you're putting it into the kitchens Kitchen and, and updating. Yeah, and granite. Kitchens and bathrooms. She's Appraisers right. love granite. They love to see the granite or whatever else they're putting on there, right? They got so all sorts getting, of different stones. We're getting a lot of questions for Terry on, on our Facebook Live. Oh, okay. Hey, Terry, what do you think about uh, do, do sellers go ahead and entertain offers during the inspection per, uh, period when they've already accepted another offer? I mean, how does that work? A guy wants to know, how about offers made during the inspection period? I mean, I have my opinion. I just want to know what your opinion is. If you're in a fully executed contract between a seller and a buyer, you right. cannot accept another offer. You can keep that offer as a backup in case the offer in first position falls apart. There you go. It's very litigious. I so, like it. So, know your stuff. That's know your good. stuff. Well, so do, people don't typically do. Well, you can always do that. You can always take a, a backup offer. What's yeah. the difference if it doesn't close in that thirty-day period, and you got someone else who's interested in the house? The bank started that when the mark when we were in the recession. They always had all those all those bank agents had backup offers. Three, four, five of them. Erase, erase the stress of a purchase. Get more professional people involved and get organized. Well, a couple of the things that I was looking back at uh, uh, files over the last few weeks even is when I, when I look at the clients that have prepared themselves and their documents literally are, are given to me from day one. Those clients close, and they're ready to close in 15 days and 18 days, right. and, and we're closing transactions that quick. Now, not, we don't have to as much anymore because kids are still in school. Sellers aren't in a hurry to get out. They yeah. want to stay for their 60 days and get to where right. the kids are well, out. And Harvey, as a matter of fact, and Terry, you can verify this too, we're seeing in our office that sellers are taking it to the last day, and now sellers even want to extend it because they have nowhere else to go. All right, and we're seeing that, that uh, you know you project a closing to close at the end of the month, whether it's... Friday or this coming Monday, and they want to move it back a week because they're not in a hurry to go anywhere. And that's what we're finding. They're just not in a hurry to go anywhere, especially if the uh, buyer didn't give them free occupancy. So why do they want to pay rent on the house that they just sold when they don't need to? I think that's coming more and more into play. And we're not even at May 1st yet. And April was a very strong sales month. It yes. was a strong sales month. Yes. Um, it's proven to be our best month of the year. And we've had Three solid months in a row, and April, the fourth month of the year, usually is the fourth month, month of the year, Bruce. I'm just educating you now. So um, remember, I'm older yeah, than you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, um, I'm older. Try, try to follow along. I'll slow down a little bit. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. There's a delay here. It's like, a delay this is here. the way it is in our office, too. Um, and, and you're finding that it's not even May yet, and these offers are coming in hot and heavy, and people are, are, are just, they're overbidding. And we're seeing this, even though as mortgage rates, Harvey, everybody... You know, I, I just want to give it to, it's the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate and Business Show. I'm going to keep it real. Mortgage rates are at the highest they've been in four and a half years. Now, we said it every week that rates were going to go up. All right, you talked about refinancing your house. Harvey, how come we're getting more refinance transaction now that rates are a half a point higher than they were just 45 days ago. It's somehow, it's somehow I wish we could go back. It's and so die. unbelievable yeah. to me. Yeah. No, I don't want to That's refinance my house when it's three and three quarters. I'll do it when it's four and a half or whatever, four and five eighths. I think it's I mean, psychological. I don't get it. Uh, it definitely is. It's all psychological. 
Oh, my God, what's going to happen? It's going to go up another quarter percent in three months. Okay, rates are going to go up. Rates and that's just it. Just bet on it. Rates are going up. All right, 248-539-9797. Let's move off to Bill in Rochester. Bill, I'm not sure specifically what your question is. Uh, let's go ahead with it. Well, I, I really don't have a question. I've got something to add to what you're talking about this okay. morning. Uh, we sold our house in Troy back in, in uh, 2014. And when she's talking about, uh, I think it's Terry, she's talking about multiple offers. We had uh, 11 offers in two days. Sat down with a real estate agent, and she presented every offer. And mm-hmm. she said, okay, here's the high, here's the low, throw out the low, here's the high. The house isn't going to appraise for that. You can accept it, but somewhere along the line, you're going to waste weeks of time because mm-hmm. it's not going to appraise for what they're offering. Mm-hmm. What was- so mm-hmm. very, very good advice. Had an all-cash offer. Uh, that fell through for some reason, but we had all these other offers. So. I guess what I'm trying to say and calling in for the other listeners is listen to your agent. They are professionals. They know what they're talking about. They know how to price price. They know what it's worth and so forth and just how to lead you through that whole process, whether you're selling or buying. So so let me ask you this question. Uh, When you were going over all those offers and that somebody said to you, listen, and, and most people, not you in this case, We'll just look at the price. So when you saw that offer come in really high and your agent said, hey, listen, I think your agent was tremendous when she suggested here, she suggested yeah, that, hey, absolutely. that's not the be-all, end-all. Um, how did you feel about that? Just take us through that a little bit. Well, we, you know, my, my wife and I just sat there and she says, here, here they are. Here's the 11 offers, we, you know. And uh, the low one, we're obviously not going to accept. We have so many other ones in between. And, and uh, I think we listed the house for like 190 and we had like a two ten offer, and she said, "Look, you're you're not that house is this house will not appraise. You can accept it, but when it doesn't go to get that appraisal, then you're going to have to meet in the middle, or it you've just wasted Bill, a couple weeks." Bill, of I want to stick with that thought. Uh, so two ten was your highest offer. What'd you sell the house for? We sold it for asking. Okay, the one, we're back down to the one ninety. So let me just ask you: twenty thousand dollars is out there in the wind. At any time, did your agent and you discuss the fact that you could call that offer and say, look, um, we appreciate your offer. It's the highest offer. We'd like to take it. But if you if the house comes in for less and we don't think it'll appraise that high, do you have a simple question? Again, I'm going to I'm going to phrase it in 30 seconds. Do it. Why not the listing agent and you call up these uh, the offer on the selling agent and say, can you make up the difference? Can you waive the appraisal contingency so that if you truly want this home, can we make it work? Why wasn't that call made for twenty thousand dollars in 30 seconds? Help me out. You know what? Uh, we never talked about that. I didn't. Uh, she she was under the impression that, you know, the what we listed at was probably the high point of the appraisal, and didn't even didn't even offer to say, look, maybe they've got this extra cash laying around. Right. You know, like I said, what, that what was it, four or five years ago, and I, I can't remember. What year was that? It was 2014. 14. No, it was in 14. Oh, 14? So it was 14. it was a little bit different of a market then. Hmm. You know, yeah. I, you know, the edu- people are continuously educating ourselves in today's market. But Bill, it's great, great stuff. Thank and you great for the call. Call. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate the call. Uh, it leads to more conversations, right? So we're always evolving as agents yes, and as we mortgage are. people, and and trying to come up with different ways. But boy, oh boy, couldn't a call been made to a simple call for twenty thousand dollars to say this? How about this? As, as all the agents now do, is they're putting minimum appraisals on there. So we'll accept your offer at two ten. But if the house appraises for two hundred thousand dollars, that will be. That are you be willing the to come price. in with ten thousand dollars? Right. Are, you and you will you contribute. To, yes. 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 Yeah. And, exactly. and, and why isn't that just communicated again? I think everything about real estate, especially as I get older, is about the communication. That's all we have. That's all you There's have. There's nothing else. Talk Just to somebody. communication. You don't have to text them or Facebook, right? Yeah, well, we want you to Facebook your questions, right? <laughs> don't forget that. <laughs> nothing like uh, old-fashioned conversation. All right, that music says we're up against a quick break here. It's 941. When we come back, all your questions at 248-539-9797. Hi, Harry Glantz and Dan Burke for Capital Mortgage Funding. We do loans everywhere. In Southfield, in Birmingham, in Royal Oak, in Grosseal, in Detroit, in Canton, in Northville. No matter where you live, we want to do your mortgage too. That's Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. Hi, 
Hi, Harry Glanz and Dan Burke for Capital Mortgage Funding. We do loans everywhere. In Southfield. In Birmingham. In Royal Oak. In Grosseal. In Detroit. In Canton. In Northville. No matter where you live. We want to do your mortgage too. That's Capital Mortgage Funding. 1-800 low rate. The best mortgage banker. Welcome back, 946. And it's it nice outside. Spring is here. That's right, 2018. Capital Mortgage Funding is the place to call. 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. We're local. You're going to save a ton of money and deal with real mortgage professionals. It's the place to go to, I'll tell you that. Hey, Harvey, did I, did I ever tell you this? Tell me. You've got 25, 26 years of experience. Brian across the uh, desk here has over 20. Okay. I remember when I hired him at the village, the former village place we sat down. Right. Yeah, well, interview went like this. You've done this for 30. So you're recommended by, and he gave me the guy's name, yeah. I go, oh, you play golf? He goes, yeah. I go, you're hired. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and He's then, been a uh, good guy to have on a scramble. Yeah. I've got uh, four decades of mortgage experience. Think about it. When Gordy Howe played, you know, he started, and they said he had four decades. So I started the mortgage business in go. the 80s. So if you go 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010s, right? That's forty. That's four decades. Four decades. Just anyway, like Gordy. Count it. I like the analogy. And, and look at Mike. Mike's experienced, knowledgeable. I love his. Uh, you know, he's he's got great experience. He has great insight, and he makes some phenomenal points. It's so in his blood. Pretty he grew smooth. Up in the business. Pretty smooth Correct. show. It's in his blood, right? Hey, we'll take your calls at two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let's move off to Richard. Richard, you've got an interesting question. You said, "Is there such things or these bidding wars?" Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was just curious. Last night, we placed an offer on a house in Chesterfield Township. Their asking price was one eighty one five. Mm-hmm. We We offered one eighty one five with no concessions. Yes. We put uh, $5,000 down. Yep. And they came back and said that there's four offers. Right. And they're going to put you in one of those highest and best, Mike. We hear that quite a bit, Richard. And, uh, Mike, you want to comment on that? What's his next step? Yeah. Or, what, Richard, what are you being – let me ask you this first, Richard. What are you being told is your next step? That um, there's going to be a, like a bidding between like they're going to take the highest best offer. Right. I- Supply. All righty, welcome back. I can't say it's a beautiful day, but every day is a beautiful day, so it's why right. not? You woke up. 248 539 9797. Got a little Lions draft coming up later this afternoon. We got Pat Caputo with sports. Tiger baseball here is they're going to be breaking that uh, three game losing streak. <laughs> yes, I have. It, Terry, don't I love laugh. Love baseball. Don't laugh at my Tigers. I am it's such a fair. Tiger fan that I like, am too. Yeah, like we're fired Very up. Very disheartened. We're, as long as we're around 500 right now, we're okay. we feel like we're, we're in. not. We're not around 500. Bro. <laughs> well, what do you Does mean? Detroit we're still not. have a baseball team? We're eight. Come on, April. April. Hey, Terry, yeah, question yeah. for you. Only April. Uh, how are the, the condo? How's the condo market in Novi? Somebody wanted to know on our phone. Oh, okay. Condos are in the same as, as single family homes. There's just not enough out there. Mm. And the important thing that a lot of people don't realize about a condo is when you purchase a condo, that monthly association fee becomes a new debt, and your lender needs to know that. Right. Because your purchasing power is different for a condo than a single family home. Yeah, you're right about that, Tara, especially as not only the lack of inventory, so we would see a lot of our empty nesters move towards condo living. Um, It was less expensive, the association fees were reasonable, and they didn't have to pay for, you know, or didn't have to do it themselves, cut the lawn or whatever the maintenance is. You can pay people to still do those and buy a less expensive homes. 
But the, right, the condo market's been hit because there's nothing out there. Association fees have really gone through the roof lately. They, they're high. They are very high. Yeah. So it's an interesting market, as you mentioned, as a lot of the empty nesters. Also, they're looking to not only downsize, but save a few dollars, right? Mm-hmm. The income becomes yeah. a little bit less. You're on a fixed uh, re- uh, income uh, if you're retired and such. So you're looking for a way to save money. But most of these families came into another thing. They all refinanced their house recently. So they got these great interest rates. They're at 15-year fixed loans. They're building equity. Um, they might only have a few years left. Wow, to go back and to sell, that's the problem, and that's why we have a lack of inventory out there. Yeah. Well, we have a lack of inventory, Harvey, because uh, we have a lot of buyers. There was a pent-up demand for inventory. Oh, and so a pent-up demand for sellers. Construction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, after yeah. the recession, people didn't, you know, people couldn't sell a house. And we came on here every week and talked about foreclosures. We talked about bankruptcies. We talked about people just dropping their keys on their counter and walking out and people being upside down. So, you know, during the recovery, a lot of people just stayed on the sidelines. And now that it's it's fully recovered in most areas, and I have to say that with a caveat in most areas, because there are certain areas that haven't come back all the way, that uh, there is a pent-up demand and people are buying houses. And listen, we're getting the baby boomers are going to go ahead and downsize, and their kids are buying houses. That's just the way it is. All you have to do is take a look at the Woodward Corridor as an example. Yeah. If you would have told everybody that Ferndale, Berkeley, Royal Oak, and go even into Clawson, Hazel Park, Madison Heights, all the way up and down, all the way in other areas, I mean, that, that these houses would be selling for what they're selling for. It's, it's Nobody would have believed it. It is. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. And with multiple offers on everything. With yeah. multiple offers yeah. right now. And there's tremendous opportunity because people, there are so many buyers out there looking for houses, and that's what's created the demand and the lack of supply. All right, we're going to move off to a caller here in Clinton Township. we got Bill calling in from Clinton Township. Good morning, Bill. Welcome to our show. Good morning. What's your question? Well, uh just getting ready to enter into the market. Uh, our house hasn't been put up yet. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to put up in the next week or two. Uh, oh, good. Agents are really excited about selling our house, and everybody says it's going to sell fast. Uh, but my issue is that, like you guys are talking about, the availability of the market. We've been out for the last week or two just doing some window shopping, see what our money can get us from that. I've already talked to a, a mortgage agency. I've already had my loan go through underwriting where they just need to fill in the blanks. Uh, but the issue I'm seeing is that they're going so fast. I mean, there is one house we were going to look at on Thursday that hit the market on Tuesday that uh, our agent calls us Thursday and says, well, the selling agent called us and told us that if we're not going to come with the idea of putting an offer in and coming strong, don't bother coming to look at it because they already had two offers on it. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. Well, you're, you're doing some window shopping now. Let me ask you this. Uh, were you approved contingent upon the sale of your existing house? We know it's going to sell immediately. Yes. So yes. You're, I, I do have some you're ready to go. I have one that I can draw on if I had to, but it wouldn't give me as much as what I have in my equity. Right. Yeah, well, here's the reason why I want you to come to Capital Mortgage Funny. I'm going to follow up after the show. I want you not to miss out on that great house that's out there. And I want you to move forward knowing, and again, I would like to get you an approval letter and go through your numbers, make sure that you are all set. Because after you close, and just by using a little bit of money to purchase this new place, and you don't lose that place, you can come back and recast the loan. So then after you sell your house, you can come back to us and put down your large down payment and avoid the PMI and waive the PMI. So. Yeah. I think that's an option that you, you know, all buyers need to know is because, right, your house is going to sell immediately, but you, what you're finding is what everyone's finding. You might not have a place to move. Right. I say buy the new house first. We already know yours is going to sell quickly, right? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a given. So why not buy the new house first? That's your goal. Why not obtain yeah, I, your goal? I, I, I guess that what I, I didn't know that I had the option of selling, you know, buying and then selling and then using, coming back and putting the down payment in. That right. wouldn't have to be two different loans or no well that and that's that if you but you have to qualify for both payments yeah so what Harvey's what saying is you could put down a little less now if you qualify for both and then after you sell your house you could take the the lump sum that you're getting and go ahead and put it down on the existing loan that you have and that's called recasting the loan recasting. And there's a one-time option to right. do that and so, he gets to eliminate his risk. Yeah, it, it, it takes all the risk and the pressure away because you've already found this gorgeous house, and then you're in control of the whole transaction. Also, Bill, so clients have come to us, and they've taken 20% out of their 401K. Want to know why? Mm-hmm. Because 30 days later, they put it all back in, and they're all done. Right, yeah, no, that, that's the possibility. I would. I mean, I've got roughly around 50 that I can get out of my 401. Yeah. I yeah. have... 
Now I wouldn't be me, Bill. Thing, I had to have like seventy, seventy-five. So you can from the, yeah. that could be in the house to put down. You can just so go that, if you qualify with like five or ten percent down. Go ahead and do that. Um, I think that's going to be your best strategy, Terry. If you want to comment on that, Bill, it's a great call. Thank you very much, and we'll follow up with you after the show. I, I agree but, with what you shared. I like that. Um, I, I just feel like as a as a buyer, he's a buyer. I mean, right. you don't really right. know he's a seller. That's and, easy. And yeah. I want to caution yeah. people on there. I'm, and I have okay. to throw this in because yeah. it's going to bother me if I don't. Yes, I think you have to sit down if you're looking at the dip, dipping in your four hundred one k. I think you really have to have a plan, and you really have to be willing to. You know, you're borrowing from yourself, but you have to pay it back. Right. I'm not a person that likes to just dip into the 401k and say, hey, let's do it that way. So I will throw out that you have to have the plan. You have to be yes. real conservative about it. you got to pay it back right away. And if you can do that and it all works out and the cards line up for you, then go ahead and do it. Yeah. That's a, that's really the the buyer beware out there. And again, most right. of these yeah. 401ks, they require that if you pulled 50 out, that you put the whole the 50 back. back in there. Yep. Within uh, X amount of time. Yeah, and that's the thing. And there's no penalty. And a lot of times you're paying yourself back at four and a quarter percent interest was the typical over the last few years. So lots of opportunities. More professional people involved will get you better results. There's no doubt about that. Terry, do you want to talk about a couple of listings you had? You had one interesting I vacant do. lot. What did you have? I have... Um for the, for the hunter and the fisherman people out there, okay, all my buddies. I have yeah, I have an us. amazing. Um, it's in Port Hope. It's up in the thumb. Okay, it is thirty nine acres on Lake Huron. Five hundred. Would, would that be right here? Plus, like right, right there, bad axe. Terry, like yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Show everybody on camera what that is. The, right there. The top of the thumb. It's an amazing piece of property. Um, it has you know an area that was used as pasture. It's got a sandy beach. I have the DEQ letter. I've got a survey. It's ready to go. That's sort of an fantastic. interesting one. Okay, I didn't it think you were going to throw that. So you're 39 yeah. acres, half a million dollars. You basically build your own community. Two, two, 199. Oh my lord. 199 for 38 acres. Right, that sounds like a really good one. Well, again, there's lots of these different opportunities out yeah. there. And then yeah. you mentioned uh, on the phone yesterday that you had about four or five listings that are going to hit. This gentleman from Clinton Township says he's getting ready to list. Is this what's coming in the next couple of weeks? All of you sellers out there are finally going to get their homes on the market? Yes. Okay. Well, That's yeah, my they, goal. Well, wait. They, they have to clean out their garage, the basement. They've got to make sure the landscape yes. looks good. They've got to put the moldings on down in the basement. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of things that they've got to do, man. Hang that closet door that's been uh, right. not, you know, hanging out right. and put Come those on. light balls in. All, all the things your wife's been nagging you to do right. that right. now that you're going to sell you're your house, sell house. <laughs> you didn't get to You didn't get to utilize it when you live there, but right. now that you're selling, you're going to fix it up. Two handy guys talking over here. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move off. We got one more <laughs> call. The guy. One more uh, call here. Uh, let's go out to Jay in White Lake. I think. Hey, Jay. Good morning. Welcome to our show. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. What's up, Jay? A couple minutes left. Jay, go ahead with your question. Okay, I just purchased a house, and I am debating on whether selling or renting the current lake house that I have. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I owe about two hundred on that house. They're telling me I can sell it for between three sixty and four hundred, or I can rent between twenty one and twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm really going back and forth on what the better option for me is. Yeah, I mean, I, you're more than welcome to sit down with us. We've had we get these calls all the time, Jane. It's a great call. And what we do at the end of the day is we sit down and really look at your financials and, and try to figure out where your comfort zone is. If you think that the additional cash flow, and I'm guessing it sounds like about nine hundred to a thousand dollars that you can net after your existing house payments, right? Yeah. If that's something right there, that's what you got to get your hands around. You got some strangers living in your rental. Um, it's on the lake. They're going to enjoy it now. You can't enjoy it anymore. At the end of the year. If it's about $1,000 you're netting, it's $12,000, would you rather have the use of the boat and have that there uh, and maybe put that money away for a year or two? And AJ, what do you, how long have you had the property on the lake? Uh, four years. Are you in love with it? I mean, do you love it? I love the property, um, but we'd be selling it if not renting it. So I'd like to take it back over at some point. Or Well, if you love it, and, and you, you, what do you owe on the mortgage right now? It's at two twelve. So it's at two two twelve. So let's say I mean you're gonna walk away with if you sell maybe with a between hundred and twenty and hundred and forty thousand dollars. Right, right. So and then remember it's not your property anymore. So if you really love it and you're struggling with it and you don't want the hundred and forty, okay, and then you can gain some cash flow, you can gain twelve thousand dollars a year. I don't know. If you're gonna keep it if the long term plays that you love it and you want to keep it, you still have it if you rent it out. You know what, Jay? More yeah, that might I mean, it's up to you, but I would tell you if you really love it and it's hard to get rid of it, but, you know, you've got to weigh the, ready, the lump sum now versus keeping the property and, and having some cash flow 
for yes. any length of period of time and keeping that property in Terry, your family. you want to say something about uh, yeah, this? Yeah, I got something else. I got a comment. Okay. Yeah. Have you been a landlord in the past? I have not. Okay. Not My easy. comment is... It's not easy, no, right, Terry? landlording is not for the lighthearted. Let me tell you. I manage properties in Plymouth and in Warren. And, and I'm a, I've been doing this for 25 years. You've got to understand contract law. You've got to have the right people in your property. You've got to run their credit. I do everything the same way that Harvey does for a mortgage when I'm renting out a property. I love it. Terry Lee Bloom. Hey, thanks for the call, Jay. Terry Thank Lee Bloom, you. you're awesome. We're going to have you back on. Looking forward to doing some business yeah, with you Yeah, you got year. it. Thank and you. And having some fun with you, no, no doubt about that. I want to thank Bruce Rosenblatt, Bobby Efros for coming in. Always, Harry Glanced. For, for taking care of me and handling everything for me. That's how we roll. Keep it here on 97.1 The Ticket. That music says we got Pat Caputo coming up with sports, social commentary. Have a great weekend. Hi, Harry Glantz and Dan Burke for Capital Mortgage Funding. We do loans everywhere. In Southfield. In Birmingham. In Royal Oak. In Grosseal, in Detroit, in Canton, in Northville. No matter where you live, we want to do your mortgage too. That's Capital Mortgage Funding, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker.